biggest thing we're trying to do uh, next is support uh, Bitbucket, uh, Azure DevOps, and GitLab, same as uh, Linear B does. Um, that's our that's our our new trim. And then the other cool thing that we've got working on um, is that we're actually going to provide this as a plugin for Visual Studio Code. Code Fusion Alive, the podcast for the Code Fusion community. Discover practices, tools, techniques, tips, and trends for modern Code Fusion development. Brought to you by Teratech, the Code Fusion experts. Develop, secure, optimize. Here is your host, the founder of Teratech, Michaela Light. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Luke Kilpatrick, and we're going to be talking about cool things you can do with Git to speed up your whole merge process uh, using a new tool called Git Stream. And we'll get into that in a moment. But first, if you don't know Luke, he's been doing Cold Fusion for years, nearly two decades, right? Yeah, yeah, a long time. Yeah. Um, and you started off doing web development even before that, in the years when the web hardly even existed in 1996. Um, and right now you do you lead the developer experience team at Linear B, and you've done that developer relations kind of role at quite a few companies now. So Yeah, I've been doing uh, developer relations about last uh, 10, 12 years. But uh, yeah, Cold Fusion's always been sort of one of my my first loves, and that's what got me into uh, uh, doing web development. Um, and I've I had the opportunity to work with some of the some of the greats, uh, uh, going back to uh, Broad Choice back in the early uh, or, uh, back in the late aughts, about 2007 2008. Worked with uh, Ray Camden and Sean Corfield and Brian Renault or uh, Brian Brian Kotek and uh, Joe and just. Yeah, I've I've had the chance of that, and uh, actually fa fairly recently um, at uh, um, Nutanix, I actually had uh, Jared uh, Ricker Hauer working for me. Uh, oh. So if that, that name sounds familiar, so yes, Jared, Mr. Uh, CF Objective. Yep, yeah, yeah. He worked for me for about uh, for about a year there, and uh, yeah, still keep in close touch with that community, and uh, it's been good. Uh, but yeah, building out into doing, you know, moving from doing code all day to uh, telling people about code, and uh, actually, what got me transitioned into the DevRel uh, world was actually being co-manager of uh, Backfug, uh, the Bay Area Cold Fusion User Group. And oh. uh, I discovered that being part of uh, the user group program back in the day, uh, that I enjoyed talking and connecting people and teaching people more than I liked writing code. And so I transitioned my career into uh, into doing that. So I still write code occasionally, but most of it uh, these days is uh, helping people improve their workflows and improve uh, what type of stuff they're doing. Excellent. So... Um... Maybe we should start off. Not everyone uses Git. I know it's a shocking thing to hear, but um, you know, in our state of the Cold Fusion Union survey, annual survey, there are still people who don't use any kind of source control or what I would call source control. So wow. um, maybe well, we should I, say what Git is and why they they should be yeah. using it. Yeah. Well, like I know there's still a lot of you know sort of single person teams, Cold Fusion developers out there. A lot of times you're like maintaining legacy systems or you're building new systems and if you're only the, if you're the only developer you know source control is more of uh trying to keep your own checks and balances rather than um you know working with a team but as soon as you add a second developer uh source control becomes incredibly important because you don't want to step on each other's toes you know if you're not the only person in writing the files uh source controls uh critical uh, you know i remember back in the old days of uh, when i first started using subversion and how much the changes and merging and all that fun was, um, but it was really important. And just not, you know, once you had a team of four or five developers, you can all be working on different files and locking stuff doesn't really work and because it, it stops you from being able to do stuff. So, you know, the idea with Git where you, um, you know, gets, gets a really different way of thinking about source control compared to the older systems like Microsoft Visual Studio Code and Teams and, you know, uh, Mercurial is fairly close to Git. 
but there's there's a bunch of the different source controls out there. But the industry is kind of standardized on Git. And if you're looking to get work these days, if you don't understand Git or ha- know how to use Git, it's really hard to be a developer. I, I would yeah. agree with that. So just to be clear, Git and other source control tools let you they save in a repository a copy of your code together with the differences that each programmer has made when they make a change and with git you can have separate branches so one feature request may go in one branch another and another so it keeps it all organized and then you can roll back anytime you know if you made a screw up i know no one listening ever screws up their coding but just in case you did you can roll back to a pre prior version um, and then the other thing we're going to talk about later in the episode is merging uh, of mm-hmm. changes. So that, that's well, the basis of it. And I, and yep. I would like to say that even for one programmer and his or her dog, it's, you should still be using Git because you really have more than one program in your project. You have you from six months ago and you have you now. Uh, and often the two don't talk to each other. <laughs> yeah, there's always been that problem. And and the other thing with, with uh, Git, especially when you start doing things with GitHub and some of the other uh, hosting platforms, uh, is code reviews. And reviewing, mm-hmm. having other people review your code uh, is a really nice feature of uh, Git um, and at GitHub, as well as uh, um, Bitbucket. And uh, with uh, if you use GitLab, uh, those are the three main big uh, Git yeah. repository companies. Uh, and GitLab calls them merge requests, but they're okay. you know code reviews a very important thing because a lot of times people will find issues just looking over another person's code, and Absolutely. it's become a critical part, especially um, in any type of security thing. If you're doing anything with uh, socks, socks too, uh, usually code reviews are required. Mm. Let me just share the screen with the results from the survey so we can see what the top ones are. You'd actually, Nate, you were, you're pre-essent, Luke. You you picked <laughs> out that GitHub, Bitbucket, and GitLab are the top three, probably account for, well, 60%. I, I can't quite do the math yep. here, but or maybe 70%. Probably closer to 70% here, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then some people have GitHub Enterprise, which is self-hosted. Which is still um, Git. <laughs> yeah. And then Subversion still exists. You know, yep. folks use that. But uh, And then um, there are a few Azure other... Dev- Azure DevOps is also uh, similar to Git as well. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, and then some of these other things like zipping up folders and uh, compare, you know, beyond compare. Yeah. And they're not source control guys listening. No, <laughs> no, no. There's... Uh, yeah, definitely the majority though is 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 using um using git and then and, uh, a few others here yeah so there's still a chunk of people you know six percent who don't do they don't i mean there's the, these the people who say they don't use any source control in the zip up folders folks and the google uh, drive yeah google drive copy directories I, I think there's a chunk of people who haven't quite got the message so well it just it, it, you know github takes a little git takes a little bit to wrap your head around but mm. it's still, um, you know, it's it's a it's, you know, the the top three are all based off of Git. And just a little history of Git. Git was actually created by uh, uh, Linus Torvalds, or Linus or Linus oh. or however you, uh, mm-hmm. who's the if people remember, he's the founder of Linux. And mm. he wanted he didn't like any of the source control systems out there for managing Linux. Yeah. So he created Git so that it would manage Linux the way he wanted to work. And then it's spread through the industry like wildfire over both the last, mm. I guess, about the last 15 years. It's been really, really big. You know, now, now it's it's hard thinking that uh, 15 years is like 2007 now. <laughs> wow. Yes. You know, it it's hard it, to think it, of that. You know, I'm 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 back remembering uh, the old CF United's back in that day. Yeah, there you go. In fact, if you think of 2007, 50, we're 15 years away from 2007, but you go 15 years before that, it was before the internet really existed in 1992 or commercial yep. internet for sure. I'm sure yep. it was academic internet, so it was quite it is quite a long time ago. Um yep. I just want to say to listeners, you know, just in case you got the false impression, you can only use Git for open source. Not true. You can use it on private projects, commercial projects. Maybe you need a paid version like Bitbucket or GitLab. Um, so, um, uh, and any ch- well, so GitLab's open source as well itself. So you can run your own GitLab server for free. 
Mm. Um, you can run your own Git server for free. Uh, the thing advantage that GitHub and Bitbucket and all these other things, they take care of all that managing of the server for you. So mm -hmm. by running, um, and the way that Gitstream works right now, which is which is the product we're going to talk about in a little bit, um, it requires you. Right now, we're only supporting. You know, it's new. We just came out on September twenty seventh or twenty second. So, like you wow. guys are hearing it first, you know, um, and and it's uh, it's exciting, but uh, it only operates on um, GitHub at the moment. But we're looking to support oh. the other product, other uh, other flavors of Git uh, hosting shortly but that's uh so you know and it looks like the majority of your from your survey um people are using github it's kind of it could become one of the industry standards owned by microsoft mm -hmm. uh good company very supportive developers um you know it's it's been really interesting to see how microsoft has changed over the last 15 years of our opinions of it uh as developers mm. it used, yes, to be, used to be evil right but yeah. now they now that they're moderately good, <laughs> well, and they've 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 embraced open source, like stuff like Visual Studio Code, which is a phenomenal yes. open source project that they've released to the world, and you know is becoming a bigger and bigger IDE. Uh, you know they've they've done a lot of stuff. Um, you know everybody thought when they bought GitHub and LinkedIn, uh, Microsoft would ruin them, and in fact, it's both have accelerated and they've left them alone enough to still keep their own cultures. So. Um, you know, it, it it's it's who would have thought that Microsoft uh, Microsoft of the '90s was like the worst thing ever, and the Microsoft of the 2010s and and present as a developer, they're actually a pretty great company to to work with, um, and that's that's been a big change. Um, so it's and it's uh, it's exciting to see that because they're giving you know they're giving away tools to developers for free that are really useful. No, that is definitely what they've done with both GitHub and uh, Visual uh, Studio Code is great because they have the the money to invest to pay for developers to be doing it. So they're still a mostly open source projects. I, I don't know about mm -hmm. GitHub, but Visual Source uh, Visual code, Studio Code. Is, sorry, getting my it's okay. things messed up. Um, that's like ninety nine percent open source, and then there's like one percent that's their telemetry stuff that they keep. Uh, private mm -hmm. um but the point i was trying to make is on a normal open source project people volunteer their time here microsoft is paying developers to work on these open source projects promote them to you know listen to do roles probably they probably have a paid role like you luke where they listen to what developers want and what issues they have with it and then they improve it so it definitely is great now i will say you know I, I'm not a big Microsoft fan, to be honest, even though they're doing these great things, because they do get benefit out of seeing all the code that goes through GitHub. I'm sure they have mm -hmm. some AI being written in the background that scans all that code to be a you know virtual assistant coder over your shoulder that will mm -hmm. give you suggestions, just like that That's, other uh, GitHub Copilot. Copilot. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I think they do a similar thing with um, VS Code. They kind of see what kind of coding issues mm -hmm. people have and what have you. So. You know, yeah, no, and, and Microsoft's Microsoft's doing it for their benefit too, right? But it's changed. It's changed. They've changed their tactics a lot from working with developers and encouraging developers rather than trying to to basically suck out money from developers, which yeah. is which is the previous uh, thing. You know, and that's that's always the 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 rub, right? If if you're not paying for it, chances are you're you are the product, <laughs> <laughs> right? So let let's we talked a little bit about. You know what a merge is, but I think we ought to explain to people, you know what what our sure. branches and pull requests and merges because they're the meat of using uh, GitHub, and yeah. this is where Git Stream helps speed things up. So, yeah, tell us what a branch is. Uh, well, so usually when you're starting to work on a new feature for your app, um, usually your best way to do is you you clone the repo and you create a branch and the branch is basically your area where you're working on. So this is where your branch is diverting from the trunk. So think back to a tree. The trunk is your main line and then you branch off to make your changes. And then once you've made your changes, you need to merge those branches back to the trunk. And that's where stuff comes into conflict because, well, what if someone's working on a different branch at the same time on the same piece of code? how you resolve those conflicts now you know resolving conflicts is something that we have in almost every so source just, control. just to clarify a conflict is where two people edit the same lines of code in different ways in effect Correct. all the same 
piece of code, maybe they change some variables or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you've, you've got that conflict and that conflict's got to be resolved. And, you know, and that's, that's the merge process where you're resolving it. Now, if things are going really well and, and people are working on different parts and people are doing different things, uh, you know, Git will merge stuff really quickly without conflicts. Um, but there's also, you know, if you screw up, if you do, don't do it well. If you if your code is not perfect 100%, because you know it doesn't happen to me, but I know it can happen to other people. Um, is uh, you know if your code's not perfect, um, you've got a uh, you've got a problem because now you've either merged in with no review and you've now broken the trunk, you've broken the build, and you owe someone a case of beer. Um, that used to be our our that used to be I used to work on a team that uh, if you broke the build, you had to buy beer for the team on the Friday. Um, so don't break the build. Um, and that's what we have CI for is to check to see if that merge is not is doing that. Uh, CI is continuous integration. But the problem is, is so you can merge and there would be no review. So GitHub in 2008 came up with this idea of what's called a pull request. And so when you pull your, your code down um, and you make your changes and then you push it back up to and you commit it to the branch, you want someone to verify that your code in the branch is good and correct before it gets merged into the trunk. And that's what a pull request is called. Or that's that code review. And what's been really interesting in that how, how the industry has changed is that we have been doing um, a lot of digital transformation to doing what's called CI and CD. Now, CI is continuous integration. And what that is, is tests and unit tests. And basically, when something is merged to trunk, there is a whole bunch of changes uh, tested based on tests that have been written. And then the second thing, once everything passes the test, it's deployed. Now, back in the old days, we deploy and make a release every nine to 18 months. And you know, we all remember the old versions of Photoshop that would take 18 months to come out. Um, you know, you could have a kid twice for that time. Um, that's not how the world works anymore, especially in cloud. Uh, a lot of companies are deploying 5, 10, 15 times a day. And the only way to do that is through a great CI process and through a great deployment process. And we and a lot of companies are getting there. But what we did in our research is we found what's actually slowing code down the most is actually the human element of the code review. So that code review, you say, hey, I need a code review before I can merge. And now you have to get somebody else's attention. You have to get their time. And now they have to, and they're coming in cold. Um, you know, they don't know when the code review is going to be what's in it. You know, it might be, hey, I changed the CSS and it looks good to me, LG, uh, you know, LGTM, or it might be a 500 line thing uh, to go and dig through multiple files. So there's lots of uh, variability in that. And because of that variability, it's a little bit of a Pandora's box as you open up that uh, PR. And you don't know whether you're going to take you five minutes or it's going to take you 20 minutes or it's going to take you two days. And so that's what we're trying to solve because we found that that's the slowest part of the cycle now. And that's what we're doing with Gitstream is to try to accelerate that code review. And code reviews are really important because they catch a lot of the bugs and it's that human interaction. But there's also a lot of stuff that doesn't really need the deep code review. But, you know, there's and it's different for every different team. This podcast is brought to you by TerraTech, the cold fusion experts. Develop, secure, optimize. Get detailed show notes on today's episode and your free CF Alive Modern Cold Fusion Guide at terratech.com. That is T E R A T E C H dot C O M. And now back to today's show. I was reading through the. the uh GitStream website, you have this statistic there that says, you know, the average time to for a pull request to make it through to production is how long? Uh, about seven days. So it takes seven you know, days. Wow. So that's that's the average. Um, I've worked on open source projects where it took six months for a pull request to be picked up. Uh, I've I've seen stuff. Some teams are really good, and they'll pick them up all that day. It all depends on your team discipline. And I've had people say, like, "Hey, can't this be fixed in culture?" And yeah, it can. 
But culture is hard to change and culture is hard to impact and hard to pick rules around. Whereas if you can programmatically say, here are the rules and here's the rules to follow to do that, and it's automatically doing based off what you've written, um, it becomes a much more effective thing. So so let me, so I'm going to back up a little bit and just say like what Gitstream actually is. Um, so the way that we figured how to solve this is, you know, you submit your pull request and Gitstream then jumps into action and takes a look at it. It sees how many lines you've written. It sees what files you've touched. It's, and it sees who you are. And what it does is based on, we've got this file called a .cm file or continuous merge file. And it's a YAML file with a set of rules. And those rules can be adjusted for everything from line writing to estimated time to merge. There's a whole bunch of different properties that you can put in this. And what it does is it reads through and says and it adds labels or it can add reviewers or it can add comments to give the reviewer a lot more information about that pull request it also can be certain things like say you're editing the ux files you want to make sure that one developer is your you know master ux person they want to see everything that comes through and they have to approve it great if you touch these files it automatically assigns that reviewer um, so there's a lot of power here, and it's all power that you can use, which which is great. Um, it's all controllable. We make a few suggestions, but really, it's it's taking uh, and sitting down with your team and figuring out, okay, what are the set of rules and guidelines we want to do, and what do we want to encourage? One of the things that I think a lot of teams try to encourage is small PRs, um, and because PRs can be expensive because they use a lot of time, um, going to a smaller process that are faster to review and and more readily available uh, improves your throughput, but also is going to improve your code quality because the faster those that code that branch lives, the longer that branch lives, the more and my di more divergent it comes from the trunk. And so you want nice short-lived branches, small PRs, and small amounts of change over time that builds up to do it. And that's how you get a faster and more reliable product as you release it often. And so that's that's how things in the elite teams are changing uh, to do that. And we assist that with Gitstream by basically, you know, you touch this part, it it follows the rules, it gets decorated with the right labels and comments. And so when it's assigned to you, you get a notification. It says, hey, you've got this PR, go do it. And that hopefully speeds it up so that instead of taking seven days to PR, it may only take hours now. To get that merged and then once the pr is cleared you're free to merge and you'll adjust for your conflicts and uh you're ready to go work on your next project and that's work on your next ticket and that's uh that's the idea is to really speed up the the time needed and if some stuff's touched like say you did docs or tests or something like that and you don't need the review you can do the pull request it will decorate it it will auto approve it and auto merge it for you if you want as well for the little stuff. And so that way you're not bothering people. So you're freeing up time too. There's lots of functionality and, and ways to make it work and adapt for however your team works. So it's sort of like uh, an, uh, an assistant to all the developers. I mean, this could be done by a human, right? Oh, yeah. And I'm sure in some organizations, they have an assistant who like looks at things and says, yeah, small change, standard change, critical change. Yep. And uh, maybe an analogy here is when you go into the ER, the hospital, the emergency room, um, they do triage typically, particularly if they're busy on a Saturday night. For some reason, a lot of people have accidents on Saturday night. I can't think why, but they'll have a nurse who triages and they say, OK, this patient, you know, they just cut their finger. They need a Band-Aid. You know, this patient is a standard whatever it is. I can't think what a standard medical procedure is, but it's not, you know. They broke their, their arm, so they need it setting. It's not going to kill them. And then they have heart attacks or other things that are like, you know, this needs a critical care team to come in and, and review what's going on. And the same thing with these, you split them up three ways, right? You have the auto-approved simple changes. You've got the standard ones that one person can review. And then you've got the critical changes to maybe the core code or some critical piece of functionality, or maybe there was a refactoring done that, that affected a lot of things. And there you want more than one pair of eyes, and maybe senior pairs of eyes to look look at the change. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. Uh, I have a friend of mine who works for SAP. He ha He's a vice president. He's got 2,000 developers that work under him. He has three developers working full-time uh, to get uh, these uh, pull requests assigned to the right people for review. So, you know, one of the things is if he adopts Gitstream, 
you know, those three people can now be working as developers and contributing code rather than having to spend all their time figuring out who does this pull review, pull request review. So there's there's some ways of of this to, you know, automate and help uh, these larger teams. And this is free. That's the best part. Gitstream's free. Um, and we're hoping that both open source and uh, commercial stuff picks it up. It's it's a tool to help you use it. Um, one of the big things we're doing right now is, uh, are you familiar with uh, Hacktoberfest? I am. Yes, it's happening right now. It is. And we've actually got a blog post uh, about this on how we can use this. Because one of the cool things about Hacktoberfest is you get all these great PRs and all this open source and everybody's helping out. And some of them, though, there's some people that just want the t-shirt and they may not put in the <laughs> highest quality PR, like add your name to a list. Hey, PR is accepted. Great. Uh, but that's not um, the right way to do it. And if you're a maintainer, you've now got a big bunch of spam requests that you really don't want to dig through. Oh. And so what we've actually done and created is a special uh, CM file for Hacktoberfest for maintainers to actually work as a spam filter. So when someone submits wow. a PR, uh, and if it's of low quality, um, it gets labeled as a spam question mark. So we're not actually kicking it out, but we're throwing a label on it for the maintainers so they can go and look and see all the ones that are labeled and and check and see whether or not it is. Um you know, it's 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 all that type of stuff. So, um, yeah, that so, way. Yeah, but, so ha Hacktoberfest for folks who don't know is is a month long. Like, let's improve our open source projects we use and, and do some contributions. But and that's the positive side. And I encourage people to do that for all the Cold Fusion open source projects that are out out there. Even if it's just a little thing, change, like fixing errors in the documentation, that's something most developers are capable of doing. I would say. Um, but you know, uh, all the way up to adding features or, or fixing things. Mm -hmm. So, but like you said, it, it produces a lot of changes that may or may not be wonderful. <laughs> yep. Well, and, and, and so one of the things that I've encouraged a lot of the Hacktoberfest is, uh, we've got this really cool feature called estimated time to review. Um, this is actually kind oh. of our, our, a little bit of our secret sauce with Gitstream. Um, and it allows us to take a look at your code, see, we make a guess at how long it's going to take that review. If it's a small change, it's going to get like five minutes. If it's a big change, you're going to see that it's going to take an hour or two to, to review all those changes. So we, we've, we make a guess at that and put it in as a comment so that you know, when you're trying to schedule your day or trying to think is, you know, okay, you know what? I'm going to go bang out 10 of these five minute reviews, but I know I'm going to need to schedule some time this afternoon to go put this other. And just having that alone has been huge. And we're actually using Gitstream. The Gitstream team is actually using Gitstream to develop Gitstream. Uh, we, we like eating our own dog food here. Um, since July, when they started using it, uh, our pull request uh, time has been cut in half. The time from that commit to when it gets reviewed and merged has been cut in half. So if it's taking you seven days, it's now taking wow. three. It's and it's potentially even faster because you're getting when you open a pull request, you get a whole lot more information rather than just hey, it's a pull request. It's now okay, you know, it's touching this area of the code. Um, you know, one of the cool things you put into it is we we fully support regular expressions. You know, hats off to Ben Forda to say you know regex is good. Um, uh, we actually support regular expressions that actually allows us to, you know, you can search some of your code to find. So one of the ways we're doing that is uh, checking for dependencies. Um, so if we deprecate something, um, we can actually have that in the commit file. And we actually can put that in as a comment. So even if you've su submitted a pull request, you can actually see, oh, you know what, maybe I should do go change that to do this and then I can clear it and resubmit. So there's there's some stuff that we can put in there that allows us to help you know fix those deprecations uh fix dependencies there's a lot of different ways that this is being used because i said we've not even been out for even a, a month yet and we're starting to see some surprising use cases from our from our, our users out there so i do you also give visibility on all the pull requests and who's you know holding things up and who's the fastest whatever you want to call, I don't know what you call them, pull requester. Well, so, so we've been actually, so this is actually where Linear B makes its money. 
So Linear B, we provide a phenomenal set of tools that hooks in between your source control system in Git, and we support Git, Bitbuck, or Git uh, GitHub, Bitbucket, Azure DevOps, and um, GitLab. And we hook into Jira, or uh, there's other, uh, or mostly Jira, but we we support a few others as well. Um, and we take the that and measure that together. And so that's that's where we and we sell that, but it's free for up to eight team eight eight developers. So if you're a small shop, check out linearb.io, and you can hook that in and and see what you think. Uh, but that's really the idea here is that with Gitstream, is people will start using Gitstream, like it, and then they'll want to see the insights and they'll want to see that metrics and the data. And you know we have a product for that, and that's how you know I pay my bills. <laughs> but that's you know we're giving this tool to developers for free. But it's usually the management or the product or the engineering leadership that wants to actually see how stuff's actually going. And thankfully, those guys have budget, whereas uh, developers, yeah, we don't get that much. So, so that's kind of how uh, how this has been. That's that's sort of the the business model here. Yeah, I was wondering how you could give it away for free. So it, it's a, a free. It's, it's sort of a bit like I don't know if uh, which version of Git does this. Maybe it's Bitbucket is free for up to five developers. Yep. If I remember right. Yep. Um, so it's a similar model to that. GitHub, and then GitHub's if you have more free. people on the team. Yeah, uh, GitHub's free for open public repos, but if you want private repos, um, you have mm. to pay. So like that's like all these companies they they give something away to get you using it, and then there's something else that allows them mm-hmm. to have a business, right? Right. So, okay, well, that makes more more sense. So but if folks can try this out uh, today for free, just on a, a small uh, development team or a small for, code for, base. For Linear what B, about... for linea- <laughs> yeah, linear for B, linear is, B is free. Yeah. The metrics and the dashboards are free for update people. Um, yes. And there's some features that are in the enterprise product that aren't available in the free product. But Gitstream, this tool that we are for helping manage pull requests and do all that, that's completely free. And if it's up oh, to me, okay. I will always keep it free because it's a tool to help developers and it's a tool to help you get stuff off your lap. The primary thing what it does is getting stuff off your laptop into the team team branch, right? Like, And that's where we've got a lot of tools that help us code. We've got a lot of tools that help us test. But this is sort of the first thing we saw this gap of getting code from your you know, it works for me on my laptop into the trunk. Um, that we found is the slowest process. And this is a way to try to accelerate it. Oh, so that sounds great. Do you have a roadmap for what you're going to be adding into this? Uh, yeah, biggest thing we're trying to do uh, next is support uh, Bitbucket, uh, Azure DevOps, and GitLab, same as uh, Linear B does. Um, that's our that's our our new trim. And then the other cool thing that we've got working on um, is that we're actually going to provide this as a plugin for Visual Studio Code. So you'll actually be able to see the rules and automations in uh, Visual Studio Code, and it'll actually look at your code and say, "Okay, you currently hit this automation. You hear really, um do that, and that lets you get um, get your pieces together." This is very cool. So um, now, you, it, it, how many folks are at Linear B doing this stuff? Um, we're a small company. We've uh, we're half in the U.S., half in this Israel. Um, our product oh, wow. and okay. our product and engineering teams are in uh, Tel Aviv. Um, marketing, sales, uh, a lot of our leaderships over here in the U.S. Uh, we're scattered around the U.S. Uh, Israel's a little smaller, so everybody kind of centers into Tel Aviv. Um, <laughs> But that's the Silicon Valley of Israel, as I understand. It, it really is. Uh, I got to go there in July, and it was amazing. Um, and we got a fantastic team there. And it's uh, Linear B is about eighty people. Uh, we're growing. It's I joined. I only joined in June, so this is we literally. I joined, um, and actually, I've been deep in the product, even though I'm. Uh, I report into the marketing team. Um, I'm. I'm still hands on in the code. Still, I'm doing developer marketing, developer relations, this whole whole area. And, you know, so I've had really my fingerprints in the product, which has been really awesome um, to make sure that this product is something that's useful to developers. And, and that's something that's been uh, 
really cool. I've been really happy working uh, with a team to make something that I think helps people like me. Um, you know, you're always much more passionate about a product that you want to use. Absolutely. It's always good to use the product yourself. So then you can understand uh, it better. Um, and so just to be clear, currently it works with GitHub, but you've got plans to have other Git related yep. uh, repos report uh, supported. Um, and just to be super clear here, you can use it with any language. I mean, it works great yeah. for ColdFusion, great for all your front end, JavaScript, Angular. It, it, it's it's code agnostic. Code. If it can get yeah. to GitHub, it can be used. All we're doing is we're just checking yeah. your lines um, and we can mm. do a regex on it. We're not reading your code per se. Uh, we're not okay. storing it. It's just, it's just uh, everything's all controlled by this .cm file. And it's a YAML file okay. that you write. And uh, yeah, and the biggest thing is we're going to be, we're adding more and more power uh, to the labels. So like one of the cool things we just added yesterday, uh, so how active in development is our labels now monitor state. We have stateful labels. So if you go and make changes, uh, to your code and resubmit the pull request, the label will change based on that. Um, oh. you know, so there's, there's some cool stuff there. Uh, we, you know, we color the label. So if you decide, you know, you want to color code, there's a lot of different things we're trying to do to decorate, you know, a lot of ways we're taking your pull request and we're decorating it with information and that information helps, um, helps a lot. Very cool. Uh, well, here at Teratech, we mostly use Bitbucket, so uh, we'll be excited when you come out with with that. Um, I think we may have one or two projects that are on GitHub, so maybe oh, we can play with it. There. Yeah, give it a try. It's 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 a it's a cool piece of tech. I've been I've been really excited about it, and uh, it's it's pretty easy to get up and running. Uh, you just install it from the GitHub Marketplace, and then you just uh, copy in your uh, GitHub Actions file and uh, a .cm file. Uh, and you save it, you commit it, and uh, you're ready to rock and roll. It's 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 a pretty quick onboarding. You you can use this on private repos or public ones. Correct. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah it's just it's it's right now we're set up for a GitHub uh, cloud that supports GitHub Actions. Okay. Um, so another thing on your roadmap, I guess, is people who have on-premises GitHub. Maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, I, I, the on-prem GitHub, we mostly it should work. Um, I just haven't, we haven't had someone really test it. Uh, right. You know, as I said, we've only been live for for about a month, and uh, it's it's been great seeing the usage go up and up and up um, as people start to do it. Like we're, I think this is a problem that almost every developer working in a team has. Uh, so I view it as, you know, we just need to get people aware of this, and if they get aware of it, then they're going to start to see the power that this can do to make. You know, code change committing uh, just that much faster, and that and that's really what it is. It's a it's a tool to help folks get their code into trunk faster. Because I don't know about you, I like code that ships and gets out to people, so I can go work on something else. Anything that helps me get my code into production faster, I'm all about. Well, I, I think that makes sense because it, it's not just wanting to get it into production. It's hard to remember what the heck you did uh, on some code. You know from seven days ago let alone if it goes out beyond that oh yeah um so Man. you know i think it's a great aid for, for having effective code reviews because otherwise someone reviews the code and you're like i can't even remember what i wrote there you know exactly you know doing your own prs uh, uh you know doing your own reviews and it's it's just also you know categorizing i think i just think categorizing the prs is such a powerful thing because you you know if it comes in as this is you know got two reviewers and it's going to be a high risk area people are going to pay a lot more attention uh there's always a joke in, I, I say this joke all the time when i'm speaking it's like if i get a 10 line pr i'm going to go through it with a fine tooth comb you're you're going to have tabs not spaces i'm going to make sure that it's you know everything's right you're camel cased you're 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 all set if you give me a 500 line pr looks good to me <laughs> 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 right and and a lot of people do that because you're not going to go spend time to dig through that 500 line pr but if the small prs are taken care of and you now see when those comes through that this is a bigger deal that pr you're going to spend a little bit more time in the review to make sure that it's done right and it's doing what it, what the developers said it's going to do because that's and you know and that keeps your error rate low it keeps your uh changes 
you know, it accelerates your amount of change, but it also lowers your rollback because those code reviewers, those code reviews are of higher quality. Uh, I'm looking at the pricing page and I'm a little confused because you've got several products at Linear B. You've got security products, metrics, and all kinds of things, but they're all rolled into this f- yeah. the free pro or enterprise version. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically okay. uh, that's basically how it works is you've got the free we've got the uh the free the free tier the um which you know has has a lot of features a lot of functionality but of course of all free tiers it's you know you all want we want you to upgrade right <laughs> so that's of course, uh, otherwise you couldn't stay in business and make this cool stuff exactly so that's 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 what we're trying to do um you know we're we're growing um we've got we've got a large number of users that are really enjoying linear b linear b has been around for four years five years uh and it's had some really great success so we just uh closed a 50 million dollar round in uh early may uh just before the vc uh the vc winter started so you know we're, we're we've got some nice runway and we're, we're excited and uh uh there's some there's some really good stuff happening and uh get streams you know my part of it and uh I, I'm excited to see how it gets used, and and I'm always interested in feature requests. Uh, what does it do that it what what should it do for you that it doesn't do now? Um, and you can check out the docs.gitstream.cm um, is the the main URL uh, to go through the docs to check it out. Um, you know, linearb.io slash devs, the dev website. Uh, I put it into dark mode because, you know, it, developer pages look different than, than leadership and engineering pages in my, my view. You know, I want, I want our site to be for developers by developers. Very cool. Well, thanks so much for explaining this new uh, Git tool, uh, Git stream. If folks want to find you online, Luke, what are the best ways to do that? Uh, probably the easiest way. I'm on Twitter at uh, L Kilpatrick. Uh, uh, you can email me Luke at linearb.io. That's probably the fastest and easiest. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to hear from from folks. Uh, LinkedIn is also good. Uh, Luke Kilpatrick on LinkedIn. Um, you know, I've been. If you're in the CF community, chances are we have one or two people in common because uh, they've been been around that for a while, and uh, it's actually a great opportunity. You know, we found this. Uh, I'm speaking on Wednesday at uh, SAC Interactive, which is Nolan Eric's uh, user group in Sacramento, and uh, you know, I think it was his posts uh, on LinkedIn that uh, uh, brought me here. So I'm I'm excited That's to. Right. Right excited to do that and uh it's uh it's good to get back into hanging out with this community and uh bringing something that i think uh every cold fusion team if you're using git should be using cool all right well thanks so much for coming on the show and great luck with git stream in the coming year oh thank you Get detailed show notes on today's episode in your free CF Alive Modern Cold Fusion Guide at terratech.com. That is T E R A T E C H dot C O M. Viva la CF Alive Revolution!